importance of this game? The numbers seem to suggest that. Keep in mind that the Pirates are 8-5 against the Cardinals and 5-2 and at home, so who's the favorite here? Won't matter once they shout, play ball. Young and old alike, the Pirates and the St. Louis Cardinals. Showdown three, the Buccos, one game back of the St. Louis Cardinals in the National League Central Division. The first place Cardinals come to town to start a three-game series. Greg Brown along with Bob Walk. There's a pennant race in Pittsburgh, Bob. You can feel the excitement, the electricity in the air here in the Burg. Uh, Greg, uh, yeah, how fun is it right now as a Pirate fan to look at those standings uh, as we go into September, and, and really we're going to be looking at this for a long time. We'll get the whole month to study this, but this is what it's all about. Check out what we're going to be doing against the Cardinals and the Reds. A lot of head-to-head -head action. This is what we're going to study for the rest of the next month. And we'll study, too, Bob, our uh, barrel automotive league leaders in terms of where the Pirates are against the St. Louis Cardinals this year. The Pirates have won five, eight of the 13 games played. Look how they have out homered them this year. That's incredible. Oh, when you think of the Cardinals, you think about their, all their good hitters, their good offense that they have, but head to head, uh, especially if you look at the ERAs, it's the Pirate offense that's been doing the better job. And of course, most of that is from those home runs. Barrel driven to be better. The Pirates looking to be better. This series against the St. Louis Cardinals, the Buccos, and the Redbirds. The showdown begins in just a moment with Francisco Liriano against Shelby Miller. Coming up next. That's over a century of faith. We cheered him at Forbes Field. We cheered him at Three Rivers, and now we cheer him at the best ballpark in this country. Generations of fans have handed down the tradition of pirate baseball. 
This season, they're adding to that tradition. And we're proud to be here to watch every pitch. We're going to have every pitch for you here on Root Sports this weekend. And what a weekend as uh, the Labor Day weekend kicks off. And a uh, big time pennant race. Like anything we have seen, certainly at PNC Park, and it has the feel of the early 90s and maybe even before that. The great teams of the 70s at Three Rivers, and prior to that, of course, Forbes Field. The great history, really, of these two organizations, the Pirates and the St. Louis Cardinals. And now these two have struck up a rivalry once again as the Bucks have won eight of the first 13. About a month ago, the Cardinals came to town for a five game series, and the Pirates won four of five. Two weeks ago, a tightly contested three game series. The Cardinals won two of three at Bush Stadium. So here we are with the Pirates trailing the Redbirds by one game and the Cincinnati Reds not far behind. Now the games have been uh, you know, pretty much uh, very close. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot that you can choose between the two clubs. One of the big differences has been the offense. The Pirates uh, surprisingly have really relied on uh, on being a home run team. I mean, they, their offense against the Cardinals is clubbing it out of the ballpark. The Cardinals, on the other hand, they try to punch their hits together. They hit well with the runners in scoring position. I wonder what effect that uh, Bird will have as he's in the lineup uh, for the first time against these Cardinals. And of course Carlos Beltran. The veteran for the Redbirds. Here is their lineup Mike Matheny their skipper Matt Carpenter leads off and it's Carlos Beltran and Matt Holiday. Alan Craig has driven in 54 runs on the road this season third in the National League. Yadier Molina is their all star catcher and MVP candidate. David Freeze at third Shane Robinson in center field Pete Cosma at short and the pitcher is Shelby Miller. We'll take a look at the uh, numbers of Francisco Liriano brought to you by Chevrolet. They're obviously very good. He has uh, been an incredibly consistent pitcher for the Pirates this year. A couple of uh, games only out of his 20 starts where he's been roughed up a little bit. And that's why that ERA is even way better than it is at 274. And as it is, uh, he would rank among the league leaders, certainly if he had enough innings in to qualify. Doesn't just yet. Pirates defensively. McCutcheon in center, Tabata and Bird on the corners. Alvarez Barmas on the left side of the infield. Neil Walker, Garrett Jones on the right side, and Russell Martin behind the plate. Talking to Marlon Bird earlier today about the number of times he has been involved in a pennant race. He said twice previously. Once with the Phillies in 2003 and once with the Texas Rangers in 2009 and on his birthday he has uh, really he's been grinning from ear to ear since his arrival. A couple days ago. And Matt Carpenter will lead things off. For the Cardinals. They are 78 and 55 they have won 12 of their last 17 games. But they went through a. Long slump. First pitch ball one. 707 first pitch. 85 degrees first pitch temperature. Matt Carpenter, one of the top leadoff men in all of baseball, takes ball two. Leads the league in runs scored, hits, doubles. He looked at his RBI total, 66. He's probably going to be well up into the 70s by the end of the uh, season. I mean, that's Pretty amazing number for a table setter. A great job. As he takes a strike and the uh, lone left handed bat in the lineup against Francisco Liriano. The uh, Cardinals are five games under 500 when the opposition starts a lefty. One of the reasons why Liriano is pitching tonight and will probably see a lefty on Sunday, and that's ball three. Liriano. Has been outstanding after Pirate losses this year. And he's been outstanding here at PNC Park. Career numbers against the Cardinals there. A strike three and two. 95 miles per hour from Liriano. He 
went the distance against the Cardinals in the middle game of that three game series at St. Louis. A four hitter. Pirates won that game five to one. Full count. Strike three call. Well, everything was up and in, up and in, and they got the three two. He threw that little slider that was upstairs, but it hung on the corner. Nice way to start things. See that slider with the Allegheny Health Network Super Mo. Carpenter, a big first out. Starting this series, and now Carlos Beltran. 36 year old switch hitter batting 310 on the year. That's the eighth best mark in the National League. 10 home runs. I'm sorry, 23 home runs, seventh best in the league, and 70 runs batted in. Only one. He hits 266 as a right hand hitter. You see 329 from the other side of the plate. Think about this Cardinal lineup. It's very balanced. There's not a lot of places where you can say, oh, here's a, a rest spot. I can do, I can pitch around that guy, go after this guy. Might not be a ton of power, but it's up and down a lot of just good hitters. Yeah, that, that's the that's it in a nutshell. They they don't hit for a lot of power. They're 12th in home runs of 15 teams in the National League, but they lead the league in hitting. More runs than any club in the National League by far. Oh, they're so good at, at bunching a lot of hits together in, in one inning. If they get a little something going uh, on you. It just seems to snowball. They'll put five or six hits in a row uh, together before you even know it. And they'll put the ball in play most times. They've struck out the second fewest times in the league. This ball's popped up. Shallow right. Marlon Bird drifting in. Oh, nice pitch there. A little change up down the way. That Beltron fooled on it, reaching. The location. You got the, the good arm action, but it's a change up, just 87. Beltran probably hoping he would just foul that one off, but got too much of it. Just a lazy pop fly. Oh, Luriano faces Matt Holliday. Pirates uh, have had a lot of trouble with Holliday this season. He is hitting 370 against Pittsburgh pitching this year. 285 overall with 18 homers. Two and zero. Oh. Great crowd, uh, all three ball games for sure. Place is going to be packed, three and zero. Oh. Already out on the rotunda or the standing room. Three zero pitch, swinging away and fouling it back. Still plenty of. Cardinal red in the seats. Maybe not as much as we've seen in the past. A year ago today, 24 homers, 90 ribbies for Holiday. He spent some time on the DL this year, and he walks. He's aboard with two outs, and now it's Alan Craig. Liriano with 130 strikeouts on the year, 50 walks. This will be a most interesting matchup all weekend long. Pirates well, against Craig. Most of the time, whoever you're playing, you're going to pick somebody. Okay, this guy's not going to beat us. Who do you pick in the Cardinal lineup? Well, in terms of this year, I just told you Holiday hitting 370 against the Pirates. Craig is hitting only 213 against the Bucks this year. What you see in his career against Liriano. So it's not going to be Craig you picked him. Well, Holiday is the three for eight lifetime against Liriano. 
375 career hitter Craig as you saw 0 for 6. And the walk and four strikeouts. At least that appears to be the game plan early on it's 0 and 2. Six game hitting streak going for Craig. Liriano coming off. Not such a great start against the Giants. Six days ago in San Francisco he gave him four runs. In four innings. With even, six three loss. Even with looking at those numbers Greg I hope this weekend Craig does not hit with runners in start. Uh -huh, agreed. <laughs> I mean, I don't care what those numbers say. No, no. It, he is 452 with runners in scoring position. He is very dangerous when he can knock in runs. And with the uh, you know, the old hidden vigorish, that 0 for 6 makes me feel nervous. Not good. 452 runners in scoring position. Holiday at first base at the moment. One ball, two strikes on Alan Craig. And he fouls that one up the way into the club level. Alan's got a nice little tail on his fastball tonight. He's thrown a few of them. But really ran well. That one did. Starts on the plate, and ends up a couple inches off by the time it gets up there into the strike zone. Francisco Liriano. Bucks come to bat against Shelby Miller. Golden Triangle and here at PNC Park. Jose Tabata will be leading off for Clint Hurdle's Bucks. 77 and 56. And the lineup is brought to you by Toyota. Tabata, Neil Walker, Andrew McCutcheon, Pedro Alvarez hits cleanup, then Marlon Bird, Garrett Jones returns to the lineup after being out for three days, gets some work in. He's four for seven in his career against Miller. Russell Martin, Clint Farmas, Francisco Liriano round out the starting nine. Shelby Miller is really having a fine, fine season. Uh, his numbers will uh, stand up with anybody. 25 starts. He's won almost half of them. ERA in the twos. You look at the uh, strikeouts. Well over innings pitched. Good fastball. Throws hard. And likes to use it. Jose Tabata leads off. And of course, Yadier Molina has returned after being placed on the disabled list for a couple weeks. The Cardinals are 9 and 2 since he came off the DL two weeks ago. Tabata takes ball one from Shelby Miller, that fastball. Hitting 265 and hitting leadoff. Against right handed pitching with the Marte out. 
Hoppita having a lot of success this year against the Cardinals. He's hitting 385 against St. Louis. He's a 333 career hitter against the Redbirds. Sterling Marte has swung a bat with his good hand and hopes to maybe start swinging with both hands this weekend. Ground ball and a base hit. A leadoff single for Tabata. Jose is almost always going the other way. They throw him a pitch right in the outside corner. He was committed to that hole on the right side, puts it through. Take advantage of the leadoff header getting on. Play with an early lead. Hey, Walker four for six against Miller this season. Nine homers, 40 RBIs for Neil Walker. We mentioned that Tabata will bat lead off against right handed pitching, but against lefties. Ben Hurdle telling us that he likes that lineup he put out on Wednesday against the Brewers. So we're likely to see Harrison and at second base, Mercer at short, 1 2. Perhaps on Sunday. Line drive into left center field and a base hit. Tabata heading toward third. He is going to be there. Walker winds up at second base. Robinson through toward third, and Walker takes advantage. That was not uh, really the smartest play for Robinson. First inning of a ball game. Really, you want to stay out of any kind of a big inning. No crooked numbers early. That's what might beat you. And uh, I should have just kept the double playing over here. I mean, even a dead, perfect, right on the bag throw probably is not going to get him. So why take the chance? Throw the ball to second base, but instead the throw comes in. It's wide, and Walker easily. And not only is he not in the double play a position, he is in scoring position. They give Neil Walker a double. Infield is back. First baseman Craig Eaton with the bag off the line, and now Freeze. The third baseman steps in and well, all once it's a double. Forget everything I just said. Nice double. McCutcheon three for six against Shelby Miller. That is a nice double, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Bucks look to take the early lead here with Andrew McCutcheon tied for ninth in RBIs, third in the league in hitting. He is uh, the hands on favorite to win player of the month award. Just a, an incredible month. Major League leading 422. 523 on base. Well over 1,000 OPS this month. Seems like everything. He hits, he hits hard. Last 12 home games, he's batting 5 12. You are looking at the National League's third best hitter, 323, is tied for first in multi hit games, tied for second in hits. On base percentage, he's up there in slugging. Maybe just a good month away from bringing home that MVP award. Too. Doesn't like to think about it right now. Wants to keep it out of his mind. Just go out and play. He said he thought maybe thinking about the MVP award a little bit last year. But maybe put a little uh, pressure on himself. That he shouldn't have. After he won back to back player of the month awards in June and July. He dipped to 252 August of last year. But still one ball and two strikes. Fouls that 95 mile per hour fastball back. It stays one and two. 
Shelby Miller, the rookie from Houston, is 22 years old. 6'3", 215 pounds. First round pick in 2009. Upstairs. Two and two. Again, up and away. Miller, second in the league in terms of strikeouts per nine innings. Averages 9.7 Ks per nine. H.J. Burnett has the best mark. And he gets a strikeout there of McCutcheon. 97. One out. He got touched to go out after that ball that was off the plate upstairs a little bit. It, it mixed the location with the velocity of 97. It's a tough ball to even foul off. Miller gets a big strikeout. Now Alvarez to the plate. We're talking to a Marlon Bird on the way back about how Miller pitched to him. Now Alvarez, 32 homers to lead the league, 86 RBIs, is fifth in the National League. He's one for eight with a home run against Miller this season. And he is aboard as he's hit by the pitch. That does not happen very often at all to Alvarez. Just the second time he's been hit by a pitch this season. Not a whole lot he could do to get out of the way of that. That was way inside. That's real. Jumping back. It's only the fifth batter that uh, Miller has hit, and Molina looked like. Escort him a couple steps anyway. Make sure didn't escalate. Well, from from Miller's point of view, that's not really a bad thing. Left-handed power hitter with a base open, yep. one out. Right. He just uh, set up the double play. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to walk him. Marlon Bird tied for eighth in the league in homers, tied for ninth in the senior circuit in RBIs, and he takes ball one. So, I mean, that could be a situation. Okay, I'm going to set the tone here. I'm going to throw a ball way inside. If I do happen to get him, okay, it set the double hard, play up. Yeah. If I miss in there, it maybe sets the tone for the rest of the game uh, for his uh, battles with Alvarez. Not saying that's what happened, but that could have possible. Marlon Bird is 0 for 2 against Shelby Miller with a couple of strikeouts. Ball one strike to Marlon Bird. Seven career grand slams. His 36th birthday today. Happy birthday to Marlon Bird. The Cardinals would like to celebrate by getting Bird to ground to an infielder. Two and one. Bird playing in his third game in a Pirates uniform. Last night, one for four. Last two times up, he had a ball to the warning track and left and lined out to left field. John Buck was three for three. His Pirates debut last night. The backup catcher. Two and one. With the bases loaded. Tabata, Walker, and Alvarez. Rookie Shelby Miller faces the veteran Marlon Bird. Three and one. Gonna come to him now. Can't put Bird anywhere. Miller is 0 3 against the Pirates this season. Put in holler in here in the first.
Full count. Three and two on Bird. Neil Walker, the double, that second. Tabata started the inning with a ground single to right. Alvarez hit by the pitch. Three and two, one out. Still three and two. Bird, good numbers offensively. Top ten in homers, RBIs, slugging. Bunch of offensive categories. He also will strike out a bunch, 127 times. Bird has struck out this season. That's the fifth most in the league. Alvarez leads the league. for Marlon Bird on Wednesday. A standing ovation after his second pirate at bat after he struck out on the 14th pitch and then he received his first curtain call ever. And he homered into the bird's nest in the seventh. Struck him out. Back to back. Big time strikeouts after he hits Alvarez following the McCutcheon strikeout. He gets Bird and now faces Garrett Jones. In the same way that he got Andrew, went up and away with that power fastball. Just a little under it, a little bit late. Now it's up to Garrett Jones with two outs. Lefties are hitting 268 against Shelby Miller this season. Righties just 187. Jones not in the lineup for three straight days. Then Hurdle wanted him to get some work away from the game. And ball one. He has hit safely in nine of 12 games against the Cardinals this season. A 342 average for Garrett Jones against St. Louis pitching this year. 324 average for Garrett Jones against the Cardinals. A late swing, it's one and one. Miller just keeps working upstairs, upstairs, upstairs. Everybody got to get him down. Live fastball. He wants to throw him right at the top of the strike zone where you see those first two. He's looking for swings and misses and pop flies. That's why he throws it up there. Ball two. His last home run at PNC Park was July 2nd. Here at Jones, who's hit a dozen for the year. Pirates will take anything right now with two outs. Line drive, base hit to right. Tabata scores. Walker scores. The ball heads to third. Jones to second with a double. Two nothing. G.I. Jones is back. And Miller got one of those fastballs where he didn't really want it. He got it downstairs. That's always a little dangerous to lefty down and in. That's their happy zone. Big left hand hitters, they like to be able to just drop the head of the bat straight down to the baseball. And that's what Jones did on that one. There's your location down and in, whack double. Miller thought he was off the hook. Got the two big strikeouts. But Jonesy comes big with that two out, two RBI base hit. Walker set the table with his double. 
Jones declared it with his. Great to see what a great guy here at Jones. Drives in a pair. All in one on Russell Martin. Oh, and two. A little 96 mile an hour. Kane on the outside corner. Russell Martin's reaction to that call. Home plate umpire Ted Barrett and crew chief. There's a balancing act. You're a catcher. And you don't want to be complaining too much because you're going to be asking for that same pitch when you get the mask on. And it duly noted by Russell Martin because he'll expect to get that pitch right when he's behind the plate. Oh, and he'll bring up yeah. that if he doesn't get it. Still one and two. Russell Martin hitting 300 on the year against the Cardinals. Four of his 11 home runs have come against the Redbirds. Seventh man in the order. Pirates making Shelby Miller work here in the first. 29th pitch coming up. Bucks lead 2 0. Popped it up. Second baseman Carpenter out. Pirates score two. Garrett Jones, the big two out double. I'm Robbie Smikowski. Well, it was already a special day here at the ballpark on the North Shore as the Pirates Charities, along with Root Sports, were able to present six different checks totaling $210,000 to go to various Miracle League, spe uh, Miracle League fields in the PA and Florida area. People were here from uh, southwestern Pennsylvania in Cranberry, the South Hills, Ohio Valley, Blair County, western Pennsylvania, Murraysville. And there's also a Miracle League field in Minnesota in Bradenton, Florida, and the Pirate Parrot was representing that. That was a $150,000 check you saw a moment ago with Root Sports General Manager Sean McClintock, Bob Nutting, Pirates President Frank Coonley as well. This is the seventh field that uh, ground has been broken, that is, uh, Greg and Bob, on the seventh Miracle League field. That one's going to go in Indiana County, so it's already a special day. It gives uh, young adults and kids with disabilities the ability to play the game of baseball. The fields are rubberized and flat surface, no mounds, no bases, so everyone can play the game that we all love to watch and love to play ourselves, and, uh, and a great day, and I know those kids in Indiana County can't wait till that uh, field is done. Now, Robbie, another guy can't wait who's uh, in one of the shots you had just there, and that's Bob Nutting. You mentioned to him and we're Sean McClintock from Root Sports. Uh, leading the charge for the Root Sports Pirates Charities Auction. And uh, I don't think anything gives uh, Bob Nutting as much a, more of a thrill than to see those kids on those fields. Over the last few years, fields that he has helped build. 
It really is special as Liriano gets Molina to fly out to center. Yeah, Pirate Charities did a wonder, uh, wonderful job in, out in the community, but the, uh, the Miracle Field is really one of their, their signature uh, charities. It, you look at those kids out there. We see the shots uh, that we we, uh, we show a lot during the auctions, and uh, you That's can't help but have your eyes tear up. It's a great, great thing that they do. One and zero on David Fries. Check swing foul. Liriano gets the league's leading hitter to fly out. Molina now faces Fries. Two balls and a strike. Freeze has hit safely in seven of his last nine ball games. Bounce toward Alvarez. Pirates third baseman throws out the Cardinal third baseman. Two outs. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. You call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Look how windy it is up there that today. You see that? Now it's rocking back and forth. Uh, tip of the cap to the guys up there in the blimp. Is that, that looked like it was tough? And the fact they have that shot so still, the cameraman there, despite those windy conditions. Shane Robinson takes ball one. A little breeze. Jolly Roger. One of our favorite Jolly Rogers. Yeah. 2 and 0 on Shane Robinson. You need to call that Jolly Roger Tower. <laughs> That's right. One of the buildings with the name is Jolly Roger Tower. The JRT. <laughs> That's what residents call it. A four pitch walk to Shane Robinson after he got a couple of quick outs. Couple of walks here early in the ball game for the Cardinals. So Francisco needs to settle down with the control, maybe a little bit. Pete Cosma, the shortstop, average has dipped to 217. He is 0 for his last 25 at bats. Strike one. This current over. One of the reasons that's his batting average this month. One ball, one strike. Runner at first base, Robinson. He is the second base runner for St. Louis. Francisco Liriano is trying to match Cardinals right hander Adam Wainwright and the Washington Nationals Jordan Zimmerman for the National League lead in wins. Despite the fact he didn't make his first Pirates start until May the 11th, beginning of the season on the disabled list. And because of that, still not enough innings yet to qualify officially for the ERA title. If he did have, no, have enough innings, he'd be fourth in the league. And a strikeout of Cosma. One and a half played, game one of three with the Redbirds. Bucks up 2 0.
is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And buy PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Let's go box. To the bottom of the second here in Pittsburgh. Pirates leading the Cardinals. The rivalry continues. Clint Barmas takes a strike from Shelby Miller. Every day is game day. Just about the rest of the way. All pennant race the rest of the way. Pirates will have a day off next Thursday. A road trip that begins in Milwaukee Monday. They head to St. Louis next weekend. This breaking pitch stays in. Just two off days remain the rest of the way. Not much break. Stayed right there. Armis last nine home games hitting 300. Batting 429 against the Cardinals over his last eight games. Full count. Shelby Miller was hit by a line drive off the bat of Carl Crawford. The second pitch of the game against the Dodgers, August the 7th. Ground ball, Cosma. Retires Barmas. AT&T tweet. How insane is the atmosphere at PNC Park right now? Oh, Greg, I think we're, we're, you really could tell the difference. Uh, today, outside the ballpark, uh, looked out front, out the media entrance uh, for a little bit, out on the street, and it's just it's packed out there. As many people out there as in here, everybody is, <coughs> excuse me, having so much fun with this. That, uh, I, I can imagine how. The tailgating is going to be this weekend. This is the what everybody has been waiting for since they built this ballpark. Is that in games like this, where it's really meaningful, where so much hangs on really every pitch tonight, mm -hmm. tomorrow, Sunday. One more home stand after this, and then we hope some October games. You know, on Liriano. Tomorrow night, 705, 135 Sunday, then on the road. Liriano backs away and takes four pitches and draws a walk. Well, they're not pitching the holiday, or we're not pitching the holiday. They've picked Liriano to well, you know, not gonna hurt them. They get together before every series and they decide. <laughs> Didn't want to give him a hit. Tomorrow night, A.J. Burnett. Sunday, it's likely to be Chris Johnson to make his second big league start. He was scheduled to start tonight for Indianapolis and did not make that. Called up somebody else from Double A, so we're likely to see Chris Johnson. And now time is called for Tabata steps in. Molina going to go out and they're going to check on Shelby Miller. Here comes Mike Matheny and a trainer. Molina saw something. Well, it looked like Molina was satisfied with whatever he asked. He gave Miller a little tap on the arm and then was uh, about to go back behind the plate. Saw Matheny coming out and it stayed. There were the last few pitches, a big lack of velocity, but I think he was just trying to take something off to get it over the plate for a strike. So they're all satisfied with Miller's explanation. Again, Miller threw just two pitches August the 7th against the Dodgers and hit on his right elbow by a Carl Crawford line drive. Looked really bad. It turned out he didn't miss but uh, a couple days extra time. They kept him in the rotation. He made his return just a week later against the Bucks. He went six innings, gave up 
five runs, three earned on eight hits. Ball one. Who was that that got hit in Frisco the other day on his arm? Same thing. Four arm, yeah. and they put him on the DL. Mm -hmm. Kane. 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 Two and zero. Oh. So he threw four pitches out of the zone to Liriano, and a fastball and a breaking ball here to Tabata, and he falls behind two and zero. Oh. Last time out against the Braves, very strong start for Miller. Seven innings, one run, three hits, and a six-two win over Atlanta. That was six days ago. There's a strike. That's one right down the middle of that one. I think he wanted to prove to himself he could throw a strike there. After missing six in a row. Didn't try to go for a corner or any of that stuff. Two and two. Miller has been much better at Bush Stadium this season. At home, his ERA is 192. He's won seven of ten at Bush. On the road, his ERA just over four. Tabata lifts this one toward right. And in the right center, Beltron. Two outs. Adam Wainwright is tied with Jordan Zimmerman for the National League lead and wins, but he got beat up badly the other day against the Reds. Worst outing of his career. So he will uh, not be facing the Pirates. We speculated that maybe since he only threw a couple innings the other day, he might start Sunday, but will remain on a regular day's rest. He's been a workhorse for him. Five complete games. A lot of pitches. And earlier, he had a start against us where he threw about 120 something. So I understand why they would not want to move him up, even though he only threw 50 pitches. They have not named their starter for Sunday. We're hearing it's uh, going to be lefty Tyler Lyons. Up from the minor leagues. Oh, off of Miller. Walker will be re uh, retired as the force is made at second, and they will be checking again on Shelby Miller. Francisco Liriano, the force at second base.
by Zimbelli Fireworks. Bucks Cardinals tomorrow, 7.05 after the game. Third Eye Blind in concert. You already have your tickets. Get your passes to watch the show right from the field at PNC Park. Pirates.com slash concerts. A look down at PNC Park. Let's take a look at the last play. A line drive back towards Shelby Miller. Time in the, the back of the, the right calf, maybe, Greg? Maybe, huh? He walked uh, back to the dugout, said he was fine. Yeah, it looked like he limped just a little bit, though, when he first started to get off the field. That one stung him a little. So he's been stung a couple of line drives his last handful of starts. Got to get out of the way. Bucks indeed are bird hunting. They got one bird. B I Y R D. Yeah, bird in the hands. We're two in the bush. That's right. Liriano faces Shelby Miller. Two nothing Pirates. Diamondbacks, Matt Reynolds. Swings hard in case he hits it. Back on June the 6th. Liriano takes care of him quickly. Three pitch strikeout for Francisco Liriano. His fourth punch out. Liriano one time through the lineup now faces Matt Carpenter. Struck him out looking to start the game on a 3 2 pitch. And a fastball on the outside corner 0 and 1. Carpenter riding a five game hitting streak. One strike. Mariano's first start this season against the Cardinals was here on the 29th of July. Won a 9 2 game, gave up a run seven innings on four hits. Ground ball to short. Barbus. And two outs. Oh, great signs that we see popping up all over the place all year long. Uh, you, a lot of people that you know they go by the sign store yeah. uh, before they come to the ballpark. There's a shot of it. You yeah. See they're open. It's indeed open for business. That's uh, in the strip district. Yes, it's yeah. just uh, over the river a little bit. Yeah. Well, get your signs before you come to the game. And get hyped. No one won on Beltron. Oh, hoping for a strike call there. Didn't get it. Yes, uh, must have been called high. Oh, it was middle of the plate. Boy, those are two pitches that should have been called strikes, according to the grid. Count should be 0 and 3. Mm -hmm. Be walking to the uh, the dugout. Ted Barrett, the crew chief and home plate umpire. And a line drive, and that cost Liriano. Not getting the calls, a base hit for Beltron. Brings up Matt Holliday. A couple more calls like that. Might we'll have to give him a piece of his mind. Favorite things to watch is the bench jockey. Line toward left, Tabata. No harm, no foul. Just has to throw an extra pitch, is all, or two. 
It's 2 0. yourself a sports fan you got to get, get direct up. tv call 800 direct tv i thought they were going to hit the phone they pulled up just in time thought they were going to get what see that Greg? i did that was a little that scary was, that was close very very close see the river is a uh, two tone i did see that yeah. what a great look at the fountain too the point and a great look at uh, fans of all ages here at PMC Park. The first of three against the Cardinals. Pirates begin the day a game back of the Redbirds in the Central. A critical three game series. Miller was able to strike out McCutcheon first time to the plate. There's a high fly ball to left. Back is Holiday at the trap. Makes the catch. Remember when uh, Matt Holiday went back to the track and to the wall, the series here at the PNC Park about a month ago. Ball deflected off of his glove and over the wall for a home run. Picked up an assist. Yep. McCutcheon too, wasn't it? I believe. Back on July the 30th, second game of that doubleheader. I believe uh, whatever you say, Greg. Mm -hmm. Kind of shaking his head a little bit. I thought he got that one. It is two and one on Alvarez, who was hit by a pitch. To load the bases in the first. And it's two and two on Alvarez. Since the start of last year, he's hit nine homers against the Cardinals, driven in 33. This season, two homers, 10 RBIs. But he's hitting under 200 against St. Louis pitching on the year. A couple of homers shy of tying the team record for most home runs by a third baseman. Ramos Ramirez hit 34 back in 2001. Birthday boy on deck. Alvarez watches that three and two.
55 pitches thrown by Shelby Miller one out into the third inning and a 3 2 count on Alvarez. And he'll get him on the bouncer to first. And with that let's go downstairs to Robbie it's Mikowski. Yeah Marlon Bird with a special delivery to the Pirates Clubhouse today for his birthday. Some cookies compliments of his wife Andrea. That uh, he's a big uh, snack guy is Marlon Birds have a nice little display. Remember Garrett Jones had cookies sent to his locker in Anaheim earlier this season on his birthday. But Andrea is sending them in from Calabasas, California, where the Bird family lives, his son and daughter. And uh, it was a nice gesture from his wife from across the country as Marlon Bird will have a nice little snack for him waiting after the game tonight, Greg. 36 years old today, Marlon Bird, a former 10th round pick of the Phillies in 1999. Traded to the Washington Nationals in May of 2005. Ended up signing a three year free agent contract with Texas. Spent three years in Arlington. Then a three year deal with the Chicago Cubs. Last year traded to Boston. And then released by the Red Sox. And in September last year, September 26th, for the first time in his career, he played. Winter League ball, Mexico bounce back to Miller. And it's one, two, three for Shelby Miller through three. Pirates lead the Cardinals 2 0. Sports is brought to you by Kia. To learn more, visit PGHKiaDealers.com and by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. And our Day Automotive this day in history, August 30th, 1972. The gunner, Bob Prince, hands the microphone over to Harold Arlen. Back on August 5th, 1921, Harold Arlen was the first announcer to broadcast a live play by play baseball game for KDK radio and on this day he calls a few innings while his grandson Steve is on the mound for the San Diego Padres against the Pirates thanks to Day Automotive we're going to make your day August 30th 1972 ground ball shortstop Barbas ball comes up and he makes the play and retires Alan Craig does Liriano on one pitch that's kind of a, uh, a nice uh, the state history that, that is that pretty one. pretty cool Pretty cool. That is. Some of the uh, the great things that uh, have happened in pirate history. To put it up with the uh, the other great franchises like the Cardinals. In 1921, first live play-by-play -play broadcast, Harold Arlen. Westinghouse broadcast a Pirates Phillies game at Forbes Field. And a couple of strikes on Yadier Molina. Not 
Fly to center field in the second. Did you hear that pop of the glove? I did. That was for Mr. Arlen. That the way he did it? Yeah, I'm sure. Then I want you to pull a Rosie Rosewell. He would uh, stand up on a chair with a, a pie pan full of nuts and bolts. And when a home run was hit, you know. Rosie Rosewell's call open the window at many and then home run you hear the crash the gunner would drop a <laughs> pie pan of nuts and bolts Oops, she never made it toward left top of the coming on and he makes a fine catch Looked like he wasn't sure whether he's going to dive slide or not and he makes the play two down it's kind of a a, a tough thing when you get somebody up there's got pop in the bat you're not sure right away but that ball was in on him top of the able to make the break the concentration in his eyes well played well played Liriano likes it now to right field bird back toward the track and that'll do it seven pitches for Liriano Three and a half played. Bucks lead the birds to nothing. Sports next week. Tune in Thursdays this fall. We'll see some of Western Pennsylvania's best high school teams battle it out in the hopes to make it to the Whitfield Championships. The action kicks off live. The Seneca Valley Raiders take on the Pine Richland Rams Thursday at 7 on Route Sports. Two of the biggest schools in the North Hills early in the season, but that'll be a very important matchup. That's all right. Wait till, they, wait till they play in a. He'll be watching. Yep. Be a big one in the uh, Walker household. Pirates will have a day off in St. Louis next Thursday. Play three in Milwaukee starting Labor Day, Monday afternoon, and the off day in St. Louis on Thursday. Three with the Cardinals at Bush, and then down to Arlington. For their final three interleague games against the Texas Rangers. Garrett Jones had the big hit of the night so far. After Shelby Miller struck out Marlon Bird with the bases loaded for the second out, Garrett Jones got up there and ripped a double to right, scoring 
Jose Tabata and Neil Walker. Last inning, Miller retired the Pirates in order. Drive to right. Very deep. And clear the deck. Hayden Law coming. G.I. Jones is back in a big way tonight. Number 13. And an RBI for every day he took off. Three days off, three RBIs. The work paid off for Garrett Jones. His 100th career homer. Right down the middle. Mid five, middle of the plate. He's hit the century mark. And Russell Martin sends a high fly ball deep to center field. Enough! Enough! It is gone for Russell Martin! It is for nothing bucks! Look that tweet we had earlier. How insane is it at the park tonight? It's insane. Now it's going to start getting insane. Back to back long ball. Tower is lit up, and so is PNC Park. The velocity uh, that we have seen from Miller that last pitch 90 miles an hour. Great shot of the reaction of the Pirates dugout. That was pretty cool. Derek Lindquist, the pitching coach, checked in with Shelby Miller. He started out this game throwing up a 96, 97. Popped up on the infield. That was a breaking ball. Lead off back to back home runs. Pirates go back to back for the third time this season and for the first time since June 25th in Seattle. First time since the All Star break, the Pirates have gone back to back. Garrett Jones, a two run double, a solo homer. Catcher Russell Martin, it's his 12th, Jones his 13th. How was it? Jason really has the Russell Martin home run. We need to get that other one. They can trade the Russell Martin ball for Jones's 100 ball. Fair trade, isn't it? Yeah. I was about to say that the shot of the dugout, you could see Clint. Uh, everybody jumping around behind him, everybody's happy. Clint was. Serious up front, still looking out. He knows that there's still a lot to be done right now. This is a great start, up four nothing. Don't celebrate yet. Let the let the players do that. Jones and Martin go back to back. Tell me, serious. There's no gum. Now it's three and two on Liriano, who walked on four pitches. Yeah, it's never, first time up. I've never noticed before. I wonder if Clint only chews the bubble gum when we're in the field. So he has none right now. We'll have to watch for that. All four on Liriano. Second time Miller has walked the Pirates pitcher. It was three for 40 on the year. Miller at 71 pitches. Faces Jose Tabata. Back to back homers. Then Barmas popped up. Liriano the walk. We talked about the home run ball before the game. How important it's been in these matchups. Pirates have uh, used the home run ball really to 
build their advantage over the Cardinals. And they have increased it now with two more tonight. You do have to wonder, Bob, about the well, point you made about the velocity. Yeah, and, and Miller, he throws almost 74, 75 percent fastballs, and he is definitely not doing that now. Well, that one 94, but that's about the best we've seen in a while, 94, which is about his average. I think his average fastball, just look it up, is. 93 7 right around in there 93.7 so 94 you can call that his average speed. To right field. Come on. Fair ball. Liriano going to have to chug the third as Tabata doubles to right. Just one out in business now to add on. Was a top of the two for three. Right now, Miller is really taking it on the chin in this game. 93 mile an hour fastball outside corner, but it's about belt high. Top of it for the third time. Goes the other way against Miller. 14 doubles for him. And Joe's gonna. Now yeah, they're gonna come in a little bit. Liriano at third, so they can certainly afford to play back a little. Yeah, they're gonna they're about halfway, I guess you'd call that. Where they're at. Or they think it gets low I don't Five think this will get him off. Score him, no. Shallow right. For the second out. And Miller will face McCutcheon for the third time. He struck him out with runners at second and third. Nobody out in the first. And McCutcheon led off the third inning. Hitting a fly ball to Matt Holliday out of the warning track and left. He doesn't have the velocity ahead in that first inning to throw it by catch upstairs. Going to try and get Francisco Liriano to touch home plate for the first time in Liriano's career. Who had uh, three career walks coming into tonight's game and he's walked twice so far. Say Liriano has never touched home? Never scored a run before. Oh, really? Tonight's the night. 0 oh and 2 the count on uh, McCutcheon. Jones hit 100. Francisco scored. One right. But Beltron there as McCutcheon lines out to right field. But the inning began with Garrett Jones. His second hit of the night launches his 13th home run of the season, 100th of his career. Russell Martin followed as the Bucks go back to back and now lead 4 0.
National League East title. Watching that game. Also going to be watching what happens at Coors Field in Denver as the Reds start their road trip against the Rockies. And those two gentlemen, Russell Martin and Garrett Jones, launching home runs in the bottom of the fourth to give the Pirates a 4 nothing lead. Here at PNC Park, along the banks of the Allegheny. Be packed all weekend here. And get your tickets for the final regular season homestand, which begins September 12th. Four with the Cubs, then four with the Padres, and three with the Reds. In the air to right, off the bat of Shane Robinson, bird back. Yeah. Yeah. One away. pitch, one out. Well, Sunday is our kids' days at PNC Park. This Sunday, the homestand concludes. 135 against the Cardinals. All kids, 14 and under. Get Pirates earbuds thanks to Chevrolet. Come early for the number one Cochran Family Fun Zone on Federal Street. And stay after the game. Kids can run the bases. Go to Pirates.com. Craig, I got, I got four outs on his last eight pitches. Is that what you got? That's what I have, Bob. Quick strike on Pete Cosmo. I'm getting jealous that the truck was feeding me all the info, so you whined. And now they're feeding you the good stuff. That's right. Although I've got to tell you, I do owe you an apology. I've got a letter. I don't think I'll read the whole thing, but I did get a scathing letter from Long someone. Says, don't I read owe that whole thing. Bob Walk and the audience an apology. Something that happened uh, on a telecast a few weeks ago. I, I was being arrogant. Uh, corrected you about uh, an anecdote stating that. Oh, you, you corrected me, saying I said American League instead of National League. He couldn't remember the details, but. Uh, I, basically, I sneered at you. You know what surprises me about this letter? What? Is you don't get one of those about once a week. Oh, I do. <laughs> I don't read them all. But this one, uh, uh, he, a uh, former fan, and uh, so I, I an apology, Bob. Thanks for the letter. Well, the apology I accept. It. Thank you, Bob. Strike three on Cosmo. Just in case there was a hex on it was off now. <laughs> Thanks for taking the Maloik off. Anytime. Cosmo's got a hex on him right now. Yeah, like. really. He is scuffling oh, with that for bat. his last 27 now. As bad as anybody. Banging his head on the walls. On a strike on Shelby Miller. Two and one. Slicing into the seats. Two balls, two strikes to count on Shelby Miller. Number six for Francisco Liriano, and he has set down seven in a row. He's firing a one hitter at the Redbirds. Through his five innings.
Sports Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks! Here in Pittsburgh, Pirates and Cardinals meeting in game one of their three-game showdown series. And the Bucks leading four to nothing in game one. A W gets the Bucks back into a first place tie with the Cardinals. Still plenty of work to be done on this Friday night as the Labor Day weekend begins. And Pedro Alvarez steps in. Strike one on Alvarez. He has been hit by a pitch and grounded out. Miller gave up two first inning runs and a two run double by Jones. Eight off home runs by Jones and Martin last inning. Total of six hits. Came in with the sixth lowest ERA in the league, 290. gets uh, plenty of offensive support but not when it comes to playing the Pirates. He has not gotten one run yet. Well, he has been in the games against the Pirates. He strikes out Alvarez. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Oh, from Zero a guy, run. Yeah, from a guy who gets the third most run support in the National League. Where'd you find that out? Here the notes. Yeah. Notes okay. yeah. Marlon Bird, 0 for 2. What? A few of them uh, breaking balls just not doing much, staying inside tonight. Oh, has to some problems going tonight that he's trying to pitch around. A lot more off speed stuff. I think his fastball is kept deteriorated on pretty quickly as far as his velocity. His control could be better. Like a slider, he throws very few sliders. Yeah. Trying a little everything tonight. That's hit well toward right center field, over by the wall, and this is going to short hop the wall. Third into second base with a one out double. Twenty seven doubles on the year for Marlon Bird. Cookie power on his birthday. The cookies are waiting for him. In the clubhouse, he's figured out that Zoltan Z. Right, got a ball that was about 93, just uh, above the knees, in the middle of the plate. Look for the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl. The double by Marlon Bird. Good life in that bat. Ball jumps off. Garrett Jones. Has doubled and homered. Clint Hurdle saying that uh, with Jones struggling, he was going to give him two or three days off. He could work uh, with Jay Bell, Jeff Branson. Looks like those days have paid off. Oh, and two, Garrett Jones. This two out double in the first inning just after Marlon Bird had struck out with the bases loaded scores Tabata and Walker. And then a fourth inning leading off. And then Shelby Miller his 13th home run of the year. He is now six for nine this season against Shelby Miller. Oh, 
bullpen action now for the Cardinals. They get the lefty Sam Freeman up. They traded for John Axford today. Brewers just left town last night and Axford traded today. The former Brewers closer. Now with the Cardinals. Two and two. Seven for ten now. You know, Greg, I, I'll bet you that Clint four days ago was thinking about put together some of those days off, let him work out, like you said, with the you know away from the game in the in the batting cage, and then when you do bring him back, bring him back against somebody that he's had some success with. Get that confidence going again, and it's working perfectly tonight. That's really the one of the biggest parts of being a manager, putting your players in that right spot, working with their minds, getting their confidence up. And what do you think Garrett says right now? Sky high. Martin Absolutely. Scores. Five nothing. One strike to count on Russell Martin. Jones with four ribbies. The Pirates with a 5 0 lead. Jay Bell pleased with his pupil. August 16th of last year was the last time Jones had as many as four ribbies in a game. And with all kinds of rumors about Pirates trying to acquire another bat. Good timing for Garrett Jones. Deadline tomorrow to set your playoff rosters uh, for any player outside your organization. He's got to be with the team by tomorrow. and two on Martin. Close in on hundred pitches. Well, if he loses Martin. Well, he's pitching and with Freeman about ready. Miller might be at the end of the rope. And he lost him. Let's see what Mike Matheny does with and Marmis coming to the plate. He has had a lot of trouble bending that breaking ball in for a strike with left hand hitters. We've seen three or four of them tonight get left off the plate inside. But then he's seen enough. Shelby Miller exits here in the fifth inning down five to nothing. Sam Freeman will be coming on.
brought to you by Yellowwood. And they have brought the lumber tonight, especially that gentleman right there. Number 100 from Jones. Next hitter, boom, Russell Martin. Almost in the bushes. Buccos Cardinals, Pirates lead five to nothing. Two on here in the fifth with one out. Shelby Miller is done. Going just four and a third. Sam Freeman with his fifth appearance. He's going to try and uh, put a tourniquet on things for the Cardinals. The game has uh, already got away from him a little bit. The Pirates were two on, one out. Really busted open with a big hit from Barnes. They could find a chalk line or a gap. Sam Freeman got his first big league win against the Pirates in that 14 inning game at Bush Stadium on August the 13th. They pitched a 1 2, or rather a scoreless top of the 14th inning, and they won it. And that drawn Chambers walk off hit. Dribbler Freeman off the hill to second. Not in time for a better play. Put a good job by Freeman, but because he had to come down off the mound to get that ball, that cost him the double play. But he was really quick getting a nice, uh, strong throw back to second base. So many pitchers mess that throw up. They start looking at the middle infielders. And, you know, that was always a tough throw for me to make on that double play ball. Right, he, they call him safe at second. Oh, they call him well. safe at second base. Let's watch. He misses Missed the, the bag. He didn't get and the so, uh, neighborhood that's why play. There's no argument, no, no discussion. Scott Barry, the second base umpire, watching it all the way. So the bases are loaded with one out and a bouncing ball to the shortstop. This is going to wind up being a double play. Cosma to Craig. Bucks had a run and lead it five nothing. Outside PNP at PNC Park. Look at the rock. John Wayner signing autographs at the Budweiser block party on Federal Street. He was a guest bartender before the game, and his right hand is probably cramping pretty good right now. And there's a pirate fan telling him just how great a ball player he was back in the old Three Rivers Stadium. And uh, Greg and Bob, a good time had. We got Rip Fest around the corner. Get the block party going on on Federal Street. And the Pirates in a pennant chase. Hopefully, a step closer tonight to getting a share of first place in the NL Central. Good time all around. It uh, sure looked as though John was having a great time over there at the uh, Budweiser block party on Federal Street. Pirates and their fans so far having a great time through five innings. 
five nothing Pirates lead. Book closed on Shelby Miller four and a third innings five runs eight hits. Well, they gave a, an error to the shortstop. Makes sense that he's on the bag. Bar must tap her back to the uh, the mound. And that was the correct call, but I am a little surprised that uh, you know, he, he was within what three, four inches of the back. The old neighborhood call that that's in the neighborhood. But uh, know, you know, some umpires they, they look at that differently. Barry, in that instance, anyway, was a, a stickler. Wants that middle infielder on the base. Strike on Matt Carpenter. Carpenter 0 for 2. That play right there is going to be one that they're going to have to make some decisions, I think, in the offseason on how they want the umpires. To call it out there when uh, you know, they have the review, because there'll be a lot of times you could call for a review on a double play ball, and the shortstop or the second baseman are going to be cheating a little bit. They're not going to be in total contact with that with that bat. And one of the things they might decide is no more neighborhood play. If your foot's not on the back, the runner is safe. Like tonight. Two and two on Carpenter. Full count. Mariano struck out Carpenter in the first. Got him to bounce to short in the third. Popped up to shallow left. Alvarez out and aggressively makes the catch in shallow left. Hey Gregor, is this what you you need, what you expect, or what, however you want to phrase it from your ace? Possibly all, all you know, the things. most important game to this point of the season. He's on the mound and he's throwing a one-hit shutout into the sixth inning, enjoying this uh, five-run lead. Nick Leva and Ray Searage there. Searage making notes. Could just be doodling, right? Could not be making Oh, that's true. Notes. In fact, more, more than likely he's just doodling. Got one of those uh, special pens like you sometimes use. All the different colors. Pulled foul. <laughs> one ball, one strike on Beltron. I've never seen you doodle though. You're a, a note man. All notes, all the time. I have seen you do it. I've seen your artwork. That's all I do is doodle. Yeah. I never take a note. I have gypsies for that. A lot of people on the, his staff, Bob's staff. A lot of people working for him. Eyeball to center, McCutcheon. Two outs. Place a deposit for your 2014 Pirate season tickets from full season to half and 20 game plans. There's always a plan that's perfect for you. You get great benefits all year long by being a season ticket holder. Plus, remember, deposits made now get 2013 postseason priority. To place your deposit, go to pirates.com slash deposit. You know, as crazy and insane as it is tonight, just build throughout the weekend. Still cannot imagine what it's going to be like if and when the Pirates reach the postseason in this ballpark. Hit hard to right by Matt Holliday on a 1 0 pitch. Inside out one. Yes. Loves to go to right field. One time he took an inside pitch. Went the other way with it. Setting up inside corner, put the fastball there.
Holiday aboard with two outs, and here's Alan Craig. He has struck out and bounced to short. Second hit for the Cardinals. Beltron has the other. Liriano has struck out six. He's walked two. Ball one on Craig. Pirates have done a nice job against Craig this year. Getting about 200 against Pirates pitching. Alan Craig. Lined. Oh, and speared by Alvarez. A little snow cone, maybe. Craig is retired. Six zeros for Francisco Liriano. Is provided by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. There she goes. Beautiful night. City of Pittsburgh. Cardinal fans not happy at the moment, but that young fan at least has a souvenir. Just one game. And this one's not over yet. Oh. Nope. In game box score shows you the Pirates are with eight hits. Jones, the big night. Also, Martin has homered. Jose Tabla, a couple of hits. Singled and scored in the first, double to right in the fourth. Stretch it out a couple more runs if we can. Take any chances. Two balls and a strike on Tabata. Facing the lefty Sam Freeman out of Houston, Texas. 26 years old and 32nd round pick five years ago by the Cardinals. Back to back pitchers from Houston. Miller's yeah. We've got a bunch of uh, rookies that have helped out all year long. These Cardinals, one of the reasons why they wanted to bring in the veteran John Axford to that bullpen. Some of those younger pitchers. Bounce to second. Carpenter. Retires Tabata. One away in the bottom of the sixth. The 
Pirates up 5-0. It brings up Neil Walker. Walker doubled and scored in the first inning. The liner back to Shelby Miller in the second. And he flied out to right field in the fourth, now batting right-handed. 214 from this side of the plate. And off the pitcher again. Walker trying to get a hit out of it. He will. Neil Walker twice tonight has lined the ball back to the mound. And they will check on Sam Freeman. That, that one is just a wicked shot. I don't know if it got him uh, in the shoulder or on the glove, but it was going about neck high. Probably about 100 miles an hour. Dini trying to find out absolutely certain. Be absolutely assured that uh, Freeman is okay. Must not have hit his glove or they wouldn't be making him uh, throw a pitch. You know, and if it didn't hit his glove, I thought it was going to hit his throwing shoulder. We'll see it. Oh, Jeez. man. What a bullet. He got up and he went over to cover first. Yes, he did. He was Jeez. moving in a hurry. Oh, oh man. Goodness. That's just that's that's scary when it gets up there. Freeman stays in the ball game as Neil Walker almost knocked out two pitchers tonight. Right-handed and left-handed. Yeah, the numbers are down. Obviously, you mentioned it uh, for Neil, but I still think he's he's not a bad right-handed hitter. He just hasn't got the swings from that side to. You know, to maintain that pace when he came into the league right handed wasn't a problem. There's no reason it should be now. It is possible for the time being as we said uh, Clint Hurdle said that he's going to stick with that lineup that he had in there the other day. With Josh Harrison playing second. The Pirates are likely to see a lefty on Sunday. In the meantime this guy. Blisters left handed pitching. Andrew McCutcheon, 0 for 3 tonight. Last time up, lined out to right. He is second in the league against lefties. 384 average. Starling Marte, it's 407. Best mark in the National League. Two and two on the foul tip. Shelby Miller struck out McCutcheon in the first inning with runners at second and third, nobody out. Fly ball to the warning track in left field in his second at bat. And last time up a liner to Beltron and right. Three and two. Sam Freeman with just over four big league innings this season. Strikes out McCutcheon. Oh. Oh. McCutcheon says that he hit the fouled ground. Him. Oh, it did hit the ground, but he played he's, umpire said no, he didn't he's hit it. Saying that he fell, tipped it. Hit this ball if he if he tipped it, then it's a foul ball. I don't think he got it. Pedro Alvarez now. 
Sharply hit, but right at the shortstop. And on the first. Through six innings, the Pirates are up 5 nothing. Brings you these Francisco Liriano strikeouts, these whiffs. Uh, he has been outstanding. Uh, just everything he's thrown, got the good control, the tail on the fastball, he moves it away, painting with the changeup, throwing the slider wherever he wants. Got it going tonight. Whiffs everywhere. He's retired Yadier Molina twice. Live all outs. Currently batting 332. Chris Johnson of the Braves started the day at 329 and Andrew McCutcheon third at 323. And this one right to Garrett Jones had him play perfectly. He'll keep it himself. One away. Oh, Francisco Liriano was after David Fries. 81 pitches thrown now by this left hander who is in line to win his 15th game of the season. And this is 21st start. He'd be sure he'll get a decision. Regardless, he's the first Pirates pitcher. It's Nick Strinkovich in 1946. We see the decision in each of his first 20 starts of the season, and he gets the first two outs here. Get to our Allegheny Health Network injury update. Jason Grilly is going to throw in Altoona tomorrow. 20 pitches, then he'll have a day off and pitch again. Another day off, and he'll pitch for Triple A Indy, and then they will. Reevaluate, reassess, but uh, looking as though Jason really could be joining the Pirates if all goes well by the end of next week. One ball, one strike to count. Round ball. Nice play, Barmas. Can he get him? He will. What a play by Clint Barmas on the seventh pitch by Liriano, the seventh inning. This sellout crowd will enjoy this seventh inning stretch. What a performance by Liriano and the Pirates tonight. 
in game one of three against the St. Louis Cardinals. up on the Reds so watching that game the Reds and Cardinals will meet again next week while the Pirates head to Milwaukee starting on Monday heading down the stretch last day of August tomorrow then the rosters expand on Sunday Marlon Bird doubled in the fifth and scored he is one out of three tonight is facing one time closer Fernando Salas. One down. Salas's numbers. All that good to start looking at that ERA. I'll go five. Man of the night stepping in that box to face Fernando Salas. Salas, some time on the DL, was recalled from AAA Memphis this past Tuesday. Jones, a double, a homer, a single, and four RBIs. The best best place to hit a triple bob here in this ballpark. Well, the best place is probably have a. Now there's a 4-10 gap. And that's if you got like Marte, McCutcheon type speed. I would I would say there, but I would prefer it over in right field to get a bad bounce off that Clemente wall with all the different surfaces because now. You have they have to make a very long throw to go all the way to, to third base. What do you think? Mike? I agree. We want the crazy carom off the Clemente wall. A triple shy of the cycle. Looking for his first four hit game since August 13th last year against the Dodgers. Nine career triples for Jones. And he was caught looking on that pitch. Still gets a nice hand. It's been a great night for Garrett Jones. Four ribbies. 
He homered to lead off the fourth inning, and Russell Martin followed with his 12th home run of the year. on Martin. He will start tomorrow night with AJ Burnett on the hill and Sunday he was likely to rest. John Buck probably will start. This ball lined right at third. The Pirates go down one, two, three. After seven innings, the Buck goes up five nothing. Great shots from the Allegheny Health Network Supermo tonight and tomorrow. We check out the road ahead brought to you by Nissan. Lance Lynn, 13 and 8, ERA just over 4. Opposes A.J. Burnett, whose earned run average is 318. He is 7 and 5 lifetime against the Cardinals. And 15 career starts with a complete game. He's 2 and 0 this year. 38,026 on hand. Sellout crowd. Felix PA comes on to play in left field. Defensive switches. Gabby Sanchez takes over at first base. Game's on the home stretch now. Get the defense in you want. The lead. Bullpen's starting to stir around a little bit just in case. Number 87 on the night so far. That's not really an issue. Two and one on Pete Cosma. Both pens working. And the Pirates they threw from a little further back than. The Gives him a little advantage. Notice that? <laughs> yeah. Very strong advantage. But when they get to the uh, the, the mound uh, out in the middle of the field, it seems like it's well short. Too. That's a little extra gamesmanship. Yep. 
Ground ball left side. There's Barmas. He has been flawless over there. Cosma can't buy a hit. He is 0 for 3. And 0 for his last 28 at bats. And look at Barmas. He's made some nice plays tonight. Tires Cosma throw right on the money. Colton Wong might be round of a hit by Walker, and he is the pinch hitter. Former first rounder Colton Wong is retired. And playing some defense out there tonight for him. And had that diving catch earlier from Tom out in left field. Walker dives to. Stop a ball headed to right field, bounces up. A quick throw. Everything going a pirate's way. Funny how it happens, isn't it? When you get a guy like an ace, Liriano, things do seem to go your way. So far. He's allowed two hits. One ball and one strike. Matt Carpenter 0 for 3. The 94th pitch of the game is a strike. Mariano is due up second in the bottom of the eighth inning. Got that bullpen working. Looks as though the plan is to get him through eight. We'll see as this ball is hit weakly to second. Boy, oh boy. Francisco Liriano. Ten pitches thrown in that inning. He is tossing a two hit shutout. A century of faith, generations of fans have handed down the tradition of pirate baseball. This season, they're adding to that tradition, and we're proud to be here to watch every pitch. Well said by Billy Gardell as the Pirates lead it five to nothing. Clint Barmas will lead off, and Josh Harrison comes out on deck to pinch it for Liriano. What a game. Two hit shutout to this point. Randy Choate coming on to try and keep it just a five run uh, game here in the eighth. Just 
twenty nine innings and fifty one appearances. He does not have to get three outs very often. Shake from Jeff Bannister. Ground ball. Craig. To show covering. Ariano, when he got back to the dugout, getting the congrats from his teammates. So he'll finish with eight innings of two hit shutout ball. From his catcher, Sea Rage catching. Tight crew. Harrison takes a strike. We'll get some work in. Maybe. The shark. The strike is called on Josh Harrison, the pinch hitter for Francisco Liriano. One and two. Pirates scored two in the first, two in the fourth. Home runs by Jones and Martin. Jones, the RBI single in the fifth. Now toward right center field, and Beltron is over. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. And this has been an enjoyable game tonight. Francisco Liriano set the tone. Put a foot down on his way to his 15th win. I think back to you know, six months ago. Liriano with a broken arm. Real big question mark as to what his season now was going to be like. No one thing for sure he was going to get a very late start to it. Who could have predicted uh, how well he would pitch? Despite giving up the 10 runs in two and a third innings, August the 9th at Coors Field in Denver, his ERA is 2.57. Felix PA. Retired and the Bucks go down in order onto the ninth. Three more outs to get into a tie for first in the central.
authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Well, it's been a special season here on the North Shore of PNC Park as we look at the most home wins since 2001. Should Mark Melanson get through the next three innings, or three outs, excuse me, it'll record their 44th win tomorrow or Sunday with another win. They would tie a record for most wins in the history of this ballpark, Greg. And look at that bottom footnote. 13 games left after tonight. So in a season full of milestones, the amount of all-stars, how many postseason awards, the Pirates have the potential to win. And these fans, we get another sellout tonight. They could be coming close to that as well. And uh, it's been just fantastic. And hopefully that win total will keep increasing. And hopefully they go north of 50 here at PNC Park this season. The 16th sellout uh, tonight, the 17th all of last year, the record 19 when this ballpark opened in 2001. And as Robbie said, the Pirates are in line to pick up home win number 44. Only the Braves have won more home games in all of baseball. 38,026. Have to figure another sellout tomorrow night and then on Sunday afternoon. Mark Melanson hasn't pitched since last Friday, so he needs to get some work in. He will. Pirates are looking for their 15th shutout of the year. And this would be the fourth time they shut out the Cardinals. The mark about to go over 90, or excuse me, 60 innings on the year. 59. Yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty nice deal when you think about it. How you know, great the Cardinals' uh, offense has been at scoring runs this year. Carlos Beltran leads off Mike Matheny and the Cardinals three outs away from losing for the ninth time against the Pirates this season. Game number 14. They'll play in St. Louis next weekend. There's strike one. So important to try and win this division. Stay away from that wild card. Uh, Deal where you have to have that play in game. Saw from that earlier shot. Pretty nice uh, shift on Beltron right now. Bomb is well over on the second base side. One ball, two strikes to count on Beltron. One of the two hits against Liriano tonight, the Puerto Rican native, Beltron, who idolized Roberto Clemente as a child. Robbie and Spakowski will have more on that story tomorrow night. Right to the second baseman playing a shallow right field, Neil Walker. MLB.com at bat is celebrating five years as your number one mobile app for live baseball available for iPhone iPad Android and Blackberry 10 at bat delivers Pirates baseball with live audio pitch tracking stats highlights and more text at bat to 31826 or visit Pirates.com for details. One out. Cardinals have been shut out nine times this season. This would be the tenth time. And four of them would come at the hands of the Pirates. To right again for Matt Holliday. He has two of the three hits. Might need to put a left handed shift on Holliday. See what he would do. I think that would be interesting. Challenging the pull. Yep. yep. He's so good at going the other way. Alan 
I go for three. Craig came in fifth in the league in hitting, second in the league in RBIs with 96. Paul Goldschmidt of the Diamondbacks with 104 ribbies. To center, here comes McCutcheon. Misplayed, well, hard to say misplayed. It was lined and kind of hooking on him. The ball looked as though it might get past, thankfully. Just a base hit. For Craig. Far enough. Yep. Line drive single to center. Get a, uh, here, this will be a good shot of that ball hook. Right there. About the time it was probably clearing the second base back, you saw that ball start hooking over toward left center. And now Molina with one out and two on. Ball one. Cardinals trying to come back here in the ninth inning. Down five. They have two on. The top offense in the league. And to the first baseman, Sanchez. Melanson gets over. Raise it. Raise the Jolly Roger. With a double play and a first place tie in the central. Now the Pirates uh, did everything right tonight, including good defense. So that's a great way to end it. Nice defensive play uh, by the infield. And of course, Melanson getting over, dragging the foot across the back. Beautiful ball game. If you had to just draw it up, wouldn't this be the way? Shut out, five runs. Big night from Jones. Get that confidence going. Beautiful, beautiful start from Lariano. Fourth shutout against the Cardinals this season, the most against the Redbirds since 1992. 15th shutout of the year. The Pirates and Cardinals are tied atop the National League Central Division. The Bucks are 9 and 5 against the Redbirds this season. Francisco Liriano is the Honda player of the game. Eight innings of two hit shutout ball, and again, no runs against the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, Liriano was 